lot of poor people. And I think that new ideas, uh, new innovative ideas of freedom uh, needs to um, it needs to blossom, grow in Africa. So that's why I contacted you, and that's why I even drove up there with my little my little uh, my my child and my honey for us to just uh, connect with you. Yeah, that's right. I, I know you came out to one of the, the court hearings at uh, at one point. So just let's get a little bit more background on you, Torley. You're from Liberia originally. You're in the Boston area now. Can you kind of give our listeners, before we get into, because obviously Ebola is the big issue out there at the moment, uh, but you know, before we get into that, just a little bit of background. Uh, you know, what happened in Liberia? For our listeners that have you know never heard of Liberia prior to it appearing in their news headlines uh, regarding Ebola, what's kind of the history in the 20th century of Liberia? Because the U.S. government has uh, some involvement there, or they did. Absolutely. Liberia is a small country in West Africa. It's about uh, 43,000 square miles and has about 4.5 million people. It was started in 1822 by people from the United States who left from here to go and start up a new country. It was the first republic in Africa. It started as a as an outpost of the United States government because yeah. at that time there was slavery in the United States in 1822. Um, but black people in this country could not could not live freely, even if they were not slaves. Free blacks could not live freely in the United States at the time. And so free blacks um, got together, but it was not even their 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 venture. It was it was a group of white men who got together, uh, both people who owned slaves and people who were in the abolitionist movement. Uh, these two odd bed fellows got together and decided they were going to go to Africa to carve up a place where uh, to to basically uh, raid United States of free blacks. And so black people who were not slaves, who were free, could not be free in the United States. And so the solution was perhaps they could be free in Africa. And so um, from 1822, the first bash went there. A lot of people died from malaria. But um, eventually, in 1847, they established a republic, uh, which was, uh, was the first independent republic in Africa. And Joseph Jenkins Roberts from Norfolk, Virginia, an African-American man, uh, was the first president of Liberia. Now, fast forward, um, we've had 10 presidents of Liberia who were American citizens born and educated in this country prior to leaving this country because of the, the, the inability for them to be free in the United States uh, because of their race, uh, had to leave to go to, to Liberia, and they became presidents of Liberia. We've had about 24 presidents in Liberia. The current president is a woman called Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. She's the current president of Liberia. And this country has had a rocky past for the past almost 30 years. It's been on a dictatorship uh, of the military. It's had uh, about 15 years of civil war. And there was a transition from civil war uh, not too long ago, probably like seven years ago. And so... Uh, after almost 20 years of civil war and decimation of the basic infrastructure in the country, you know, no electricity, no running water, any mm. longer, everything had been destroyed. Then we have this new uh, problem of Ebola that is killing people all over the country. It was a long summary, but that's the summary of the Republic of Liberia. Yeah, and you were born there. I don't know, are you in your late 30s or just kind of just – Taking a, lot, a shot at looking at you, and I've seen seen your picture, met, met you in person. How old are you, Torley? No, I'm old. I'm very old. Really? I, I I'm from a, a family that live very long lives, um, but I'm I'm actually sixty. I'm what? actually sixty. Yeah, wow. I'm sixty. <laughs> I'm 63 right now. Good one, Ian. <laughs> yeah, you right look now. great. I gotta say. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, my 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 uh, my grandmother just passed away not too long ago, and our family people live they live very long, and so uh, that's the way it is. My father uh, is 91, but at 88 wow. he remarried in Boston, and so you know, I just got married not too long ago, and I have my first child who is now three years and uh, congratulations and five months. Yeah. How did you end so, up leaving uh, Liberia, and how old were you? 
at that time? Well, I left Liberia in 1990. I actually first came to the United States and I first came to New Hampshire in 1982. At the time, I was working for a company called Wang Computers. It's a Massachusetts computer company. And I work as technical support specialist for Africa, Middle East, and Europe out of their European subsidiary. Um, but I was in Liberia during the time of the war. I happened to have been arrested. They were going to execute me, as they were doing right. to a lot of people. Um, they actually pulled me out of my house at 4 o'clock in the morning. It was pitch darkness when they pulled me out and they were going to go and execute me. But I was fortunate to be able to to talk them out of execution. They they made me to pay. They charged me, you have to pay $5,000. I got out on the last flight out of Liberia and I came to Boston because the company that I worked for at the time was headquartered in Boston. Mm. I had resigned from Wang, but I knew a lot of people in the Boston area who were working for Wang computers. And now you went I- back to uh, Liberia this summer, right before the Ebola thing really struck from what I understand. I want to get uh, more from you. You can stick with us, I take it. Thank you. Hang on, Torley. We're going to bring you back here. Torley Krua is on with us here. He's from FightEbola.us. That's his fundraising website. He's looking to help people out with uh, this situation, which is obviously awful. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. This is Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, October 8, 2014, gold opened at 1218.80. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1263.60, 631.80 for a half ounce, or 315.90 for a quarter ounce. That's 1263.60, 631.80, and 315.90. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter, rather than blending into the blah, 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 will help you connect better, no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, thinks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we've also got Skype. You can Skype in to username lrn.fm. But if you have a question for our special guest, Torley Krua, you will have to call the toll-free number as he is currently on our Skype. Uh, and we can't conference two Skype calls together. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here on Free Talk Live, we're big fans of alternative currency. Uh, Bitcoin's been on the rise again over the last few days, which is nice to see. And, go of course, gold and silver are historically great hedges against the problems of inflation uh i like silver personally it's uh, it's affordable and gold's awful pretty too it's a little bit more pricey you can get them both from gold.freetalklive.com through our friends at midas resources which is actually the company that's behind our syndicate uh gcn that's the company that gets us helps us get on uh, 160 plus radio stations from coast to coast so if you've been thinking about getting gold and silver or getting some more gold and silver then uh, please order through midas resources because it benefits free talk live and you'll get some great silver and gold pieces go to gold.freetalklive.com or call them up toll free at 877-857-9938 that's 877-857-9938 or go to gold.freetalklive.com We've got Torley on the line with us here. Torley Krua, formerly of Liberia, now living in the Boston area, doing some fundraising for uh, for Ebola, trying to raise awareness and uh, help some people out. I want to talk more about what exactly you're raising money for. Uh, your website is fightebola.us, Torley. Uh, you were sort of giving us some of your history about what life was like uh, in Liberia. You were threatened with uh, death by the government there. Uh, ultimately, you managed to escape during uh, during what was a, a civil war, and uh, and uh, and now you you've gone back. Uh, how many times have you gone back since since you escaped? Well, I was out for a very long time, um, up until two thousand and eight, from nineteen ninety until two thousand and eight. Mm. After there was uh, democratic elections, I went back in two thousand and eight, uh, and along with a friend of mine who's a. a, a here in Massachusetts. So I went in 2008, but this year, 2014, I was there in February, in, and I went to Sierra Leone in Liberia uh, just before the Ebola uh, uh, before the Ebola outbreak. I also went back in uh, late June, in early July, and uh, I came back here, you know, just fully cognizant of the problems that people faced there in in Guinea, in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, and I wanted to help out. And that's exactly what I've been doing ever since I came. I've put all of my stuff on hold, all of the other things I've been doing now on hold, and I'm helping local people in the local community, in rural communities, to fight Ebola, to create awareness. There's no vaccine, there is no cure, but the best way to fight Ebola is prevention. And there are people in the local communities who are working on this, you know, in rural areas that uh, don't have access to the cameras you see. Uh, so I, I'm working with those people to create awareness and and uh, prevention. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, so you were just over there in the summertime. I, I, I guess there's no longer a warrant for your arrest from back in the 80s. You felt oh no! <laughs> oh no! Those people are all. Um, a lot of them are dead. They're and, gone. <laughs> and the few that are not dead ran away. Yeah. Right. So I'm free now to go back and forth. <laughs> yeah. 
That's good to know. Yeah. So what is it that people uh, are misunderstanding? I mean, obviously, the United people in the United States, they get these news stories from the mainstream media. What are some of the big misconceptions you hear when you talk to people about Ebola in Liberia? Well, the big difference between this Ebola and other, other uh, problems around the world uh, of recent times is people feel that from the government here in the United States and a lot of the experts – they say Ebola is a tropical disease. It's never going to come here. People should just relax. And that means that people should not get involved in this in this deadly disease that is killing a lot of people. I mean, if you just check on the Internet to see just how many people are responding to this plague, to this to this problem of Ebola that's killing so many people, not too many people are involved. And I think that's a mistake because Ebola, I don't know exactly how it got there. But it got there, and now it's killing a lot of, of human beings. It's now in the human family. So every human being is at risk to a higher or lesser degree. And I think I think some of the uh, 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 misconception people have is the fact that they always get assurance from the government. You know, uh, it's okay. You don't don't panic. Don't be afraid. It's not going to come here. But it's not about it coming here. The fact is. People are dying of this very deadly disease that has no cure. How can we as human beings help them to to live, to not get the Ebola? I think that's very important. I call on the United States government to invade Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, are governments making this problem worse, do you think, Torley? I think so. I think I think so in a number of ways. You know, um, Abraham Lincoln said the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is far high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. What the government is doing today is the same old way of approaching problems. Um, for example, uh, just over the weekend, the president announced that they're going to start testing uh, people who arrive from West Africa at five airports. Um, that's one of the things that they're doing to fight Ebola. <laughs> it's a after good thing they're going to be taking people's temperatures. <laughs> they're going to take temperature. But after you take the temperature, where will you send them? You know, and right now we already know that the, 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 there's a nurse in Texas who contracted Ebola, even though she was fully dressed up in the half mask suit. And there is a nurse in in Spain. So I think they really don't understand this disease fully, but they claim that they know everything. And I think that's a problem. Absolutely. Now, I'm looking here on your website, fightebola.us. There's a donate link. You've already made your goal, but I'm going to go ahead and send something anyway. You've got 10 days left on your fundraiser, so congratulations on actually meeting and exceeding your fundraising goal. But uh, but I'm sure every dollar that you can make in addition to that uh, can help out. What Briefly, uh, what are some of, the, what's some of these dollars going to be going towards? Okay, so th th that uh, fundraising goal, if you go on the website, you're going to see that um, – uh, when you go to get involved, it goes to uh, Ebola projects in Liberia. I set the limit for two thousand six hundred dollars because I'm working with a specific group that needed two thousand six hundred dollars that mm -hmm. I need to send to them. In August, I had another goal which was two thousand four hundred dollars. For that one, I was only able to get three hundred dollars, mm. uh, which I sent to them. And and this goal was 2,600. I've exceeded that. So what I do is I connect with different communities to find out exactly what they need. And if you go on the website, you'll see one list of some of the things that people need. And that's what the money goes to. For example, it goes to transporting uh, nurses and doctors to go in villages and speak to the people in their local languages about what they need to do to prevent them from catching Ebola. The other thing that they also do in addition to transportation is they buy chlorine and supply it to people in villages to use that chlorine to wash their hands so that their hands are clean. And so these different items are the things that the money goes to buy. Torley Krua, he is uh, working on helping out folks and educating people in Africa, uh, in Liberia, about Ebola. And uh, like I said, your website, fightebola.us. There's a donate link there. I'm going to send something along. Tor uh, Torley, thank you for coming on Free Talk Live tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure being Very here. Good, I'll sir. Come another time. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. 
Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to herbalhealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. Free Talk Live. Most people, when it comes to what the government demands about their property, the zoning board or whatever department we're dealing with here that claims, that claims to have dominion over what you believe to be your property, most people just go along to get along because they understand that something nasty will happen if they don't. They understand that if they don't do what the people calling themselves government demand that they do, that eventually men with guns are going to come to their house possibly just take it from them and i think everybody inherently knows that there's a threat of violence behind what the government does oh i know you like to tell yourself stories about how it's the price of civilization to pay taxes the price of civilization is zoning it's the price of civilization to obey or well, don't forget the pig farm excuse oh sure yeah if you, you didn't right. have zoning somebody would open a pig farm right next door to you free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm if you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate well i know a guy who's really great it's the realtor mark warden do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free. Bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. And we give you all kinds of features there uh, totally free. So once again, go to freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live is brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you really need to know about ProXPN. They're a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your data online, meaning that before 
your internet information, whatever you're sending or receiving uh, from your computer and to your computer, it's encrypted before it reaches your internet service provider. So your ISP will not know what you're doing online anymore once you start using Pro XPN. In fact, one of our listeners uh, called in to rave about it not too long ago. All of the reviews we've heard have been uh, very positive. Go to uh, proxpn.com slash FTL, and you can get started there for free. Now, you can upgrade, and you're going to want to, because when you upgrade to the premium account, you will get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, you can privately torrent, and you can get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, Pro XPN does not keep records of your online habits at all, unlike your internet service provider, who's probably logging all the sites you visit and all the search terms that you enter. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Just download their free app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Setup's a little bit different for Linux users, but if you're on Linux, you can get it working as well. And their customer service is fantastic. There have been a few people that have, you know, had some questions about the Pro XPN service, and uh, all of the responses that we've received, have been, you know, they've been very happy with you know, how to, you know, change things around for Linux or whatever sort of issues they might have had. The folks over at ProXPN have been very helpful. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of the annual account. Also, FTLBTC will get you 62% off the annual account if you pay with Bitcoin for that. So don't forget those discount codes, FTL50 and FTLBTC. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. All right, so uh, you can, of course, bring up anything you would like to discuss here on Free Talk Live. Uh, with you in the studio, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to check out more Derek J. on his website, derekj.me. I heard your interview on Anarchast just uh, today, Derek Oh, J. wasn't that fun? It was very good. I enjoyed that. And uh, that's Jeff Berwick, who is sort of a well-known uh, guy on the Internet in the, inter the uh, libertarian circles. He's also known as the Dollar Vigilante, and uh, he was a big fan of your movie. Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, he and I had a great discussion. It sort of went some back and forth. I got to ask him some questions mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I thought it was fun and educational. So you can check that out at DerekJ.me. Excellent. And that and so much more. He hosts radio shows all over the place. There's a Bitcoin talk show that you do. Plus, I like document my life and stuff. You know, there's a new Every porcupine day, right? store, a, 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 a Free Stater or a, a Liberty store that's opening up, and I've been documenting that oh, each so little cool. step along the way. It's a little piece of history, you know, and if you want to go back and see what I've been recording for the past few years, you could do that too. All at DerekJ.me. So uh, there's another person that has been having his life documented recently to some extent. His name's mm -hmm. John Cantley, and I guess you could argue this really isn't his life uh, because he's reading a script. But it's him, and he's, uh, he's one of the alleged hostages of the folks calling themselves ISIS. Now, what is ISIS? Well, that's up, to, up for debate. Some people would say that it's a legitimate terrorist group. Others would say it's some sort of a CIA uh, operation to f foment anger towards uh, people in the Middle East by the people in the United States to continue justifying war. Couldn't they both be right? They could both be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the truth is, but I know that these videos are being released of this man in a uh, orange shirt sitting in a black room against a black background uh, at a desk. That's all there is to this video. And he is reading some sort of script. Whether he actually assisted in writing the script or not, we had some sort of discussion about that on Free Talk Live in the past. Nobody really knows uh, but we do know that this guy has been missing for a couple of years. He was actually apparently captured allegedly by uh, the ISIS militants in the past and was managed to get out at one point and then was ultimately recaptured by them on a, on a later date. He is, uh, has now been their spokesman for the last four videos. The fourth one just came out. Earlier today, I believe, and uh, of course, as usual, there's plenty of news about it, but it's relatively difficult to find the videos. Credit to the Daily Mail in the UK. They are consistently good at actually posting the entire video into their article where they summarize what happens in the video. It's a it's sort of an educational propaganda series uh, by ISIS. 
designed to give them the opportunity to give their side of the story. Is this the truth? Not necessarily. There's, you know, three sides to every story. The truth and then there's the other two sides. So you get to hear their side as opposed to the U.S. government's side of things as delivered by U.K. hostage John Cantley. Uh, so with that introduction, I'd like to go ahead and play this most recent video that has been released. We've played them, uh, both of the ones that uh, came before this. The first one, let's call, it, let's call it Episode Zero, was just sort of a setup episode where they introduced John Cantley. He kind of talks about himself and him, him being held hostage and that he's going to be releasing these uh, that they're going to be releasing these videos. So this is actually... Well, the th most of the people who've released videos have ended up dead in the next one, so... Yeah, he's uh, he's still alive, thank goodness. And uh, I know that there was another article about his father has been begging uh, ISIS to release him. And hopefully that'll happen for him, but I'd, it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't. Anyway, we're going to continue with the... Uh, we're going to jump into this video here. Continuing the series, this is video number four. Uh, of the series where he just sort of gives you their perspective on things. Here it is from the Daily Mail's website at dailymail.co.uk, and it's uh, it's actually stalled out here, so we're going to retry this here in a moment. Uh, again, John Cantley held hostage for at least a couple of years here at this point. Uh, the production value of these videos is fairly high. It's It's HD quality. The sound is... It's a little echoey. It sounds like he's in sort of a large room with no sound dampening. Uh, but the, the quality of the video is actually very, very good. Anyway, here he is sitting in Hello his Hello again. Shirt. I'm John shirt. Cantley, the British citizen abandoned by my government and a prisoner of the Islamic State for nearly two years. In this program, we'll touch on some of the inherent strengths of the Islamic State and look at how our governments use everything at their disposal to gain public support for their war. The Islamic State today are an inherently resilient organization, says War on the Rocks, a military news source, in an article published September the 5th. Look how far they've come since 2007 in Iraq, when 150,000 troops were in country. The Islamic State will survive and even thrive. In the face of setbacks, war only makes the jihadist movement stronger. And they are dug in for the fight. They have years of experience fighting against the Americans and know how to patiently and violently outlast long-term war projects. Didn't what they have like a uh, setback today? Didn't the Iraqi military uh, kind of give uh, ISIS what for? I have no idea. You tell I me. I that's the case. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. I, I guess we're looking at the, the strong suits of ISIS, and mm -hmm. I suppose they've got some strong suits. I think this really just comes down to... Uh, you know, the United States deciding we're going to set up a democracy in a, in a country where it's, you know, the populations are, are split and the Shiites outnumber the Sunnis. Well, no wonder you're going to have Sunnis that are upset when they're going to be the minority. They've moved from the ruling class to the minorities. This is a really strange uh, disconnect between the video quality and the audio quality. Just as a video editor myself, this is something that stands out really strongly to me. Like there are cameras from different angles, mm -hmm. there are close ups, uh, it's HD quality, as you mentioned. There's lots of video transitions in between, but the audio is horrible. It just seems weird that they wouldn't think of both of those things. Well, it's listenable, it's not horrible. I mean, if it were horrible, it's, I wouldn't play it. On right, the air. but it sounds like it's uh, in a big room, whereas yeah. they didn't use a professional microphone where. They they clearly use professional cameras. He does appear to have a lavalier microphone on. The room that had all the sound dampening on it got blown up by a Hellfire missile. Ah, that's it. No, they've always they've, it's always been echoey in all of the videos. We'll come back with uh, with more of it here in moments. And of course, there are going to be setbacks for any physical conflict, Mark. Uh, and obviously, this is their propaganda. They want you to believe that they're you know, they're right. ready to go. Yeah, they want me to believe the United States isn't going to somehow be able to beat ISIS. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven. How can they beat what they ultimately created in the first place? It's free ICBMs. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right, for every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, code FOOTBALL70. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. You do need to send a contact request on Skype uh, that will be approved, and then after that, it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype from that point forward. Uh, with you in the studio, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. We are going to continue with uh, what is a six-and-a-half-minute video, actually close to seven minutes, with John Cantley. He is the one of the current hostages uh, allegedly held by ISIS in the Middle East. And he can't lie. You know, it is a funny last name. You can't really write these things, right? Like, they chose the guy named Can't Lie as their propaganda <laughs> deliverer. <laughs> so he's reading a script uh, right into a camera. He's wearing a, his, sort of this trademark orange uh, T-shirt to, you know, that's what they all of their prisoners have been wearing in the various beheading videos that you may have heard about uh, that we've reported on here on Free Talk Live. 
and just very, very basic video sitting against uh, sitting at a desk, uh, black background, sort of an echoey room, no sound dampening. And Derek J, you were critiquing the sound of this particular video. Is this the first one you've seen of these or have you seen the previous ones? I've seen previous ones, but not when they're sitting at a desk with a, a okay, black so this background. This is the first propaganda video that, that you've seen. You've seen the, the beheading video. Correct. So, uh, and I'm surprised two- because it seems to me authentic. Like this is something mm-hmm. that, as an amateur video editor, I might come up with and then say, "Whoops, I, you know, plugged in my microphone wrong. It looks like I got the bad audio, and I got audio from the camera." It seems like a, an amateur mistake. I don't know. I mean, I think that he's just in an echoey room, and there's not really anything you can do to correct that. I mean, he's uh, he's got a lavalier microphone on, and you can see it on his, his neckline on the shirt. And a lav mic, for those that don't know, is a very small microphone. You frequently will see it in use in, like, news interviews where there's somebody's, somebody's got a little, little teeny little mic clipped to their lapel or something like that. That's what a lavalier mic is. And it's that's just pretty how, standard in the industry, you know, the t- TV industry. But it's just how it comes off to me. Like, it, initially, my suspicion was, oh, this group's... Just a bunch of CIA created videos, like a wag the dog type scenario, that old movie mm. from the 90s, um, where you know the government creates their own propaganda videos to um, justify wars. Well, who but knows? this this seems like it's more authentic because of the mistakes. Like the CIA would use high quality audio, I would think. So let's continue on here with the latest propaganda video. Just came out uh, within the last 24 hours. From allegedly from ISIS with John Cantley. Americans and know how to patiently and violently outlast long term war projects. What this means is that anyone hoping for a nice, neat surgical operation without getting their hands dirty is in for a horrible surprise once it gets underway. I'd agree with that. But for now, US intervention policy remains airstrikes and humanitarian airdrops in Iraq with a constant emphasis being placed upon minimum time commitment to pacify the public back home. Obama recognizes the dangers of mission creep and he is trying to avoid that outcome, says War on the Rocks. Mission creep is a recipe for failure because the American people will not allow sustained investment in a policy they did not commit to originally. Now, this is where it gets ugly on the home front. Well, it doesn't really matter what the American people want, it seems. I mean, there certainly has been a pushback against the war state over the last decade in the United States. And that well, certainly really the last them. few years. Yeah. It hasn't really stopped them. Uh, I think Obama was largely elected because he was against the war in Iraq. Sure. Um, what people didn't realize is that he was for the war in Afghanistan. This isn't some. He didn't trick us. That was what his his point was all along. Afghanistan was the good war. Well, he he also promised to uh, shut down Guantanamo, so he definitely tricked plenty of people. You know, I think with the Guantanamo thing, that that's really what he wanted to do, but that he found that legally it wasn't something that he could do. He couldn't that take those like people. A lame excuse. But he's the damn president. He could shut down any executive branch. He can right? shut shut it down, but there's more to it than that. Um, uh, you know, like if the idea was to give these people trials, but how are you going to give them trials when they didn't commit crimes? You know, trials in New York when they didn't commit. Tri- crimes in, in the United States. Hmm. Um, so I think that he ran into some problems there that he didn't expect. Um, but, you know, I, I still think it should be shut down. Yeah, it sounds like you're making excuses for him. I'm I not think, trying to make know, excuses. Sounds I believe. To me like he just lied, just like every other politician. Continue here. For America and its allies, the Islamic State don't mind if nobody attacks them or if everybody attacks them. They are patient and time means little to them. They don't rely on any donor or country for funds, but make financial gains from war booty and battlefield successes. America, on the other hand, has to do this as quickly and cleanly as possible. But already the subject of money has been raised. If and when we need additional dollars from Congress, we will certainly make that request, said the President on the 9th of September. With our economies largely bankrupt, getting sustained public support for yet more war is going to be nigh on impossible. Yeah, but it'll happen. I mean, just whether the public supports it or not, that's not going to matter when Obama wants more money for more bombs and more military intervention, uh, you know, over in Syria or Iraq or wherever they happen to spread this conflict to. By the time he asks for that more money, he'll get it. Congress isn't going to deny money to the military. 
because it's, anybody it that, doesn't seem to do that. Right. Anybody that votes against sending money to the military will just be bad mouthed at the next Hates election. The troops. Right. So that's you know, he's going to get every dollar he asks for. And so the public needs something really tangible. Right. The uh, the the president, the politicians, they uh, you know they they send people on and what largely are unpopular wars. They send the troops on after unpopular wars. And there's actually been a news story out that basically says the U.S. Mili- people in the U.S. military have been polled or whatever and say that they're not interested in going to do this ISIS fight. They don't think it's a good idea. But they'll do it anyway. Well, but they're going to follow orders if they're right. told to. Um, but then the politicians will send them over there and then hide behind the troops as the money gets spent. The money gets spent for the military-industrial complex that gives the campaign don- donations to the uh, the politician. The mm-hmm. military-industrial complex doesn't give free equipment to the military. If the military-industrial <laughs> complex, if these com- country these companies that uh, that make military equipment really cared about the troops they'd give free equipment to them and they charge the politicians or something right <laughs> it like it still would be a scam either way i mean even if they gave free equipment to them you'd see them getting subsidies for that free equipment or something like that it's just, always you know. going to be that way going on here the easiest card to play is that of national security thousands of foreigners have joined the islamic state said obama on september the 10th These trained fighters may return to their home countries and carry out deadly attacks, he said, which is conceivable. But if you're truly worried about national security, you close your borders. Uh Aha, now look at this. Here's ISIS, actually, or the people purporting to be ISIS, actually advocating for closed borders, which, of course, is the same thing that many, you know, right-winger, conservative type... You know, folks uh, are advocating at the same time. So strange Man, bedfellows. What in the world? Why would they be advocating for this? Now, try to imagine for a second. One would assume that these people are not strategic morons, right? They've had some military successes up to this point. Um, why in the world? What benefit do they think that they're going to, to get from advocating for closed borders for the United States? If they wanted to send people from over here to to wreak havoc, certainly that wouldn't be what they would advocate for, right? Well, that's what he is suggesting would work better. That he he's and he'll he'll make his his case here in a moment. Prevent people getting in. It's relatively simple and inexpensive, and guaranteed to be more effective than another military in- intervention in Muslim lands. Keeping people who wish you harm out of your country is much easier than going to theirs. I don't know if I agree with that assessment, but I understand the argument that's being made. And I guess, you know, on the scale of which is a more expensive uh, method of trying to stop the conflict, probably would be cheaper to try to close the borders. But, of course, it would be completely pointless because, well, anybody with a motivation to get through the borders will will certainly do that. Right. I would think, you know, a a small band of English-speaking ISIS uh, folks that maybe even have uh, U.S. passports and that sort of thing. Um, would probably, if they, you know, I mean, if they're on a military mission, they're going to be much more dedicated to getting in than somebody who's, you know, trying to get across the border to wash dishes to send money back to the family. Um, yeah. And I would think that they would, wouldn't have that much trouble getting on a boat and getting across or sneaking. I mean, you know, the, ice, the, the border, you think the border between the United States and Mexico is porous. Take a look at the one between the United States and Canada. Well, I don't think anybody is going to turn to the ISIS propaganda videos to, you know, look at serious uh, possibilities for how to change the approach of the U.S. federal government. But it's curious that they they bring this up in the midst of, you know, we're halfway through this video here. and It is curious. And they're going off now on how great of an idea it would be for the U.S. to try closing its borders instead of military intervention. It's really confusing. Yeah, isn't it? Well, we can address this a little further. Come on up here in moments, and we'll hear more from John Cantley. Uh, a.k.a. ISIS, supposedly, in their latest propaganda video coming up in Hour 2 on Free Talk Live. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com. Promo code 8989. Nothing 
compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.38 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,226 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $380. Antiwar.com reports the People's Protection Unit, YPG, a Kurdish militia common in southeastern Turkey and northern Syria, has taken to kidnapping young Kurds, forcing them to join their fighting against the Islamic State. The move is being called conscription by the militia's political wing, as they have reportedly taken hundreds of youth off the streets of northern Syrian Kurdish cities in the operation. Locals say that many young people are staying inside their houses to avoid being captured and conscripted by the YPG. The move was harshly criticized by several rival Kurdish political factions. Ibrahim Biro, a spokesman for the Kurdistan Patriotic Party, said he believes the YPG effort to force locals into the group was a cynical move designed to give them more influence at an upcoming meeting of Syrian Kurdish factions in the defense of Rojava. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports a federal judge on Sunday struck down Alaska's first-in-the-nation ban on gay marriages, the latest court decision in a busy week on the issue. It was not immediately clear when marriage licenses would be issued to same-sex couples in Alaska. However, the state does have a three-day waiting period between the application and the marriage ceremonies. The late Sunday afternoon announcement caught many people off guard. No rallies were immediately planned. Five same-sex couples had asked the state of Alaska Alaska to overturn a constitutional amendment approved by voters in 1998 that defined marriage as being between one man and one woman. The lawsuit filed in May sought to bar enforcement of Alaska's constitutional ban on same-sex marriage. It also called for barring enforcement of any state law that refuses to recognize same-sex marriages legally performed in other states or countries or that prevent unmarried same-sex couples from marrying. U.S. District Judge Timothy Burgess heard arguments Friday afternoon and promised a quick decision. He released his 25-page decision Sunday afternoon. A spokeswoman for Governor Sean Parnell said 
the state intends to appeal the ruling. If the state does appeal to the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, chances of winning are very slim since the Federal Appeals Court already had ruled against Idaho and Nevada, which made similar arguments. Voters in Alaska in 1998 approved a state constitutional amendment defining marriage as between one man and one woman, but in the past year, the U.S. Supreme Court has struck down a provision of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act preventing legally married same-sex couples from receiving a range of federal benefits. Federal courts have also struck down state constitutional bans in a number of states. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports, riot gear clad police arrested at least 17 people on Sunday after they refused orders to disperse from a spontaneous sit-in outside a convenience store in St. Louis during a weekend of peaceful protest against police violence. Thousands of people were staging protest marches, vigils, and other demonstrations in the St. Louis area this weekend, calling for the arrest of a police officer who shot an unarmed teenager in August. Another fatal shooting of a teenager by an off-duty cop last Wednesday has further inflamed tensions. Sunday's arrests were in the same neighborhood where Wednesday's shooting occurred. St. Louis police spokeswoman Shron Jackson said 17 people had been arrested for unlawful assembly early on Sunday at the parking lot of the Quick Trip convenience store. Mervyn Marcano, who is handling media relations for a group that provides jail support for protesters, said at least 19 people had been arrested. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The victims of a devastating tornado expressed gratitude that The Onion's three-part series on the disaster was reported with fairness, accuracy, and an unusual degree of sensitivity. Survivors said they were at least thankful for one thing, that The Onion put much more care and insight into their reporting of the tragedy than any competing newspaper, by far. In economic news, a Pulitzer Prize would very much help certain newspapers increase their circulation, resulting in greater ad sales and more revenue to pay their tireless, hardworking reporters, all of whom have families at home to care for. In other headlines, a group known as Americans for Fairness in awarding journalism prizes is asking all Americans to help The Onion receive a Pulitzer Prize. An anonymous man says he will murder 50 innocent people if The Onion is not awarded a Pulitzer. And look at it, it's beautiful. Look, just give us a f***ing Pulitzer already, okay? This is humiliating. For more prize-worthy stories and videos, go to theonion.com slash review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. We got some ISIS news, including... One of the Austrian teenagers who apparently went down to join ISIS, she's changed her mind, allegedly. Turns out that's a problem uh, for more than one reason. We'll uh, give you more information about that here in a few moments. Plus, there's a crazy story out of Philadelphia that Derek J. is its developing right now as we speak. Uh, It has to do with some marijuana decriminalization, protesters. Uh, we'll get into the details on that here in a moment, but it sounds, it's just very hard to understand. Uh, so Derek J's uh, gathering information as we speak on that. Uh, in the last hour, for those of you just tuning in, we got about halfway through the fourth John Cantley video. John Cantley is one of the hostages uh, allegedly being kept by the folks calling themselves ISIS. Uh, he has become their spokesperson. And he's been uh, he's been featured in now four videos where he's sitting in his prisoner orange shirts, mic'd up with a lavalier microphone on an HD quality video with more than one camera, a couple cameras switching back and forth as he delivers propaganda to uh, said camera. It can be fairly difficult to actually find these videos, so credit goes to the Daily Mail in the UK, who actually publishes the videos in each of their reports about this. Most of the American press and the uh, uh, the British press will not actually link to the videos. They will talk about the video existing, but they won't actually let you watch the full unedited uh, clip 
and Daily Mail does do that. So we are playing what is purported to be the full video here. So uh, do any of these news sources that you've seen quote the fact that the video suggests the United States uh, get its military out of the Middle East and then close its borders? I have not read the summaries of uh, of these things, Mark. I just I went looking. It just seems so strange today. that ISIS is giving the United States, you know, suggestions on <laughs> closing its borders. Yeah, well, that's where we left off in this video. So he kind of starts out with s- similar propaganda that have appeared in the last couple of these videos, where he talks about how strong ISIS is and that ISIS is ready for an attack, and they're you know they're dug in and they're you know they're trained and they know what to expect and they're going to be in and they're in this for the long haul. That's kind of been a message that has been throughout the last couple videos that has been uh, put forth. But then in the middle of the video, he gets into this editorializing about what what would be more effective for the United States. And and ISIS, whoever the scriptwriter is here, suggests that uh, the U.S. should just go ahead and close its borders down if they want to have a better chance of actually stopping uh, the violence of the, uh, the ISIS folks, because that would somehow be more uh, effective at preventing people from coming in than it would be, for instance, for them to send troops into the Middle East. Maybe they have a point, but not really, because the government closing its borders would fail, just like the government trying to stop drugs from coming into the country uh, has failed. And it's just a ridiculous idea that would be a very expensive procedure. The only thing they may be right about is that they might be able to spend less trillions of dollars closing the border uh, than going on a you know, warmongering eternal mission in They'll the Middle East. They'll create fewer terrorists in the process, I would think. Yeah, that much would be true. Of course, people who love liberty don't don't support interventionism overseas, and they don't support closing the border either. But that kind of catches I, you I up. I believe that free people should be able to cross the borders of free countries freely. Right. And if they can't, you don't have free people and you don't have free countries. Yeah, if the United States were to take this advice and close down the borders even further, it would become a less free place. And if that's indeed the goal of the supposed terrorists is to, uh, you know, they hate us for our freedoms, then the U.S. would become less free. And so they would have won, right? Uh, anyway, let's go on with the video here. Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark in the studio as we continue more with John Cantley from episode four of a series I think they're calling Lend Me Your Ears. Tom Freeman wrote in the New York Times that I have no doubt that the beheadings of two American journalists are meant to get us to overreact like 9-11 and rush in again without a strategy. Certainly the executions of my three previous cellmates most recently Britain David Haynes, shocked the public and will have made everyone sit up and take notice. The Islamic State say that the deaths are retaliations for the airstrikes, which by now have killed a handful of Mujahideen and their families. This is in response to your aggression, they say. But the killings are, rather unfortunately for us, exactly the sort of thing our governments need to bolster public support. People don't understand geopolitics, but a man having his head cut off, that's worth making a noise about. The public will respond in one of two ways. They'll either demand an end to this cycle of bloodshed and say, what are we doing back there? Let's get out. Or they'll demand revenge and support more military action. Well, it's not an either or thing now, is it? I mean, when somebody gets their head cut off, the public will respond in both ways. Because there will be some people in the public who will say the first thing that, well, this is crazy. We got to get out of there. And then there will other there will be other bloodlust types who warmongering types who are always looking to rattle the saber who will say, ah, this is more of an excuse. We need to go kill these ISIS people where they stand. Well, this is the talking about people in the aggregate. So the people mm-hmm. will. You know, a large enough percentage of the people will say, let's get out, versus a large enough per- percentage of the people will say, let's go in. Um, the question is, is who, sort of who wins out in the court of public opinion? And I can tell you that the, you know, the moneyed side on this one is, let's go in. And that's dangerous. And by the moneyed side, you mean like the military industrial complex? Well, the, the people that pay the politicians are making a killing off of all that killing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I just wish that people could have their own choice. Like, uh, oh, I support this war. Uh, I'm going to cut a check to the people who are going to fight it, or I'm going to go there myself, take personal responsibility for that which I support, or uh, I don't support this. I'm going to withdraw my money from it. Yeah, we need generals out uh, sending out YouTube videos asking for money. Our governments would already have known this, and it's entirely possible we were left behind for exactly this purpose. Now that seems pretty speculative. 
the uh, he's suggesting they're. Well- He's suggesting that the ISIS people who are taking this video and uh, uh, clearly understand English somehow are – they're just – hands are tied and they can't possibly do anything but chop some heads off. (laughs) I mean, it's really – it's kind of weird. Uh, The the point of view here is it's like, oh, well – it's yeah, pretty obvious that some people are going to be upset that people's heads get cut off. I don't even know how it happened. I know how it happened. The guy behind the camera did it. Well, what he's suggesting there is that they left us behind with the hope that their heads would be cut off. No, would be cut these off. are investigative reporters. They weren't left behind. They went there on one of the, in at least one case, uh, somebody went there. And this guy's a uh, um, he's an aid worker, right? He wasn't left behind by the the military. Well, the suggestion is that they could have put more effort into extracting them from what? their captors. Oh, I see. So they, the they, U.S. military would, would have, commandos going in to yeah. get them. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of have to ask myself, uh, you know, like what is the responsibility of the American public? This guy's obviously British, but uh, t- to go and get Americans who have willingly gone into a battle zone, it, I, do I consider the news that comes out of these to be important? I do. But do I consider myself responsible for getting the reporter who went there? Out? I don't. I don't consider that there's any responsibility I've got to get a reporter who went into a battlefield trying to get me news out. The only responsibility I suppose I have is to pay for his news story, uh, whatever rate that is that they've they're you know pe- ca- charging for it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I if I agree with the speculation that the U.S. government or the U.K. government knew that the hostages would be used as pawns, but it's certainly believable that they could have. Um, and if they did go in to rescue them, it certainly makes them look heroic, right? Like if, oh, we're going, they have one of our people. We're going, we'll spend, we'll spare no expense to save him. Whereas instead, they, uh, they apparently did attempt to do this a couple of times, but ultimately they failed uh, in, in their efforts to rescue these people. And they eventually gave up uh, on that. Now, it can't be easy to try to figure out where they where, are, where they're being held. Yeah. I mean, if you basically have little to no intelligence over an area the size of California, isn't mm-hmm. that right for Iraq? I don't know. Um, I'll look at the landmass, but I think that it's similar. That basically, it's the size of California. Right. Imagine for a second trying to find a, a house where they're keeping six prisoners, where you have. I mean, there's no state police. There's no. <laughs> there's no county uh, sheriffs. I mean, they're just going to hold them wherever they want to hold them, and then you're going to try to go, okay, you're going to try to find some civilians. Hey, where do you think the house full of reporters is? I don't know. You've got a bunch of guns. They went that away. I mean, uh, there's no way to At find At the these same folks. time, the point that, you know, them having hostages and the government doing nothing about it could suggest that they don't really care and that they know that bad things will happen to the hostages, therefore giving them more of a reason to commit war. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-951-9415. 1-800-951-9415. Call 1-800-951-9415. 1-800-951-9415. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. 
37 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free, bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features that we have there for you. They're all completely free, unlike those other talk show hosts in the business. Many of them want to charge you for their websites. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy. Is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers, a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online and or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package including the all-new Black Phone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Sounds Partici very interesting, this yeah. black phone. Uh, participation is free and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. If you are into the uh, the hacking scene, 2600 fan, you'd probably be into this. Hackthetrackers.com. So back to uh, more video here. We've got about another two or three minutes of John Cantley uh, as he is giving his latest prepared speech written by who knows who. Uh, it's ostensibly ISIS. And they're getting kind of political in this one, uh, beyond the, where they normally go. Normally it's about how these videos are about how ISIS is, you know, we're prepared, they're ready to go, and they're they're dug in, and they're going to fight as long as they need to. They talk and, about war stuff usually, but in usually. this one they're really talking about policy. Yeah, and the, so the suggestion is made here that America should close its borders, which of course I think is a terrible idea, but I think it's also a terrible idea to continue warmongering in the Middle East. So I don't agree I think it's with weird. ISIS. I think it's just weird that they would be give, making these suggestions. But whatever. So I don't agree with ISIS. I don't want it to be seen as though, oh, are you playing this video because you think you agree with them? No, I, I want to play this video because I think it's important to get the other side of the story out there. That's and I think they're very. It's very strange that they're talking about uh, the beheadings that they. 
perpetrated, you know, because this is just some English dude reading a script. He That's may right. have helped write the script, but there's no doubt that his, he's under a certain level of coercion, you know yes. what I mean? So they're talking about these beheadings as though, well, they may very well uh, incite the public against ISIS. Well, you, you could have not cut anybody's head off. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I think these videos are far more persuasive. I mean, as far as now, again, it's just me on my opinion. I mean, I'd, I'd rather listen to someone make an argument uh, as to why the U.S. should be withdrawing from the Middle East and you know Iraq and Syria, etc., than having them cut people's heads off. I think that sure. that a reasoned argument is more persuasive than out and out violence. Well, it sounds like they're trying propaganda on three different levels. There's like movie trailer style explosion videos that are sort of war propaganda for ISIS. There's the beheading videos, and now there's there's this the sitting down and reasoned argument. I think they're all sorts of propaganda. Um, they're trying to no communicate doubt. a message, but they do it in different ways. I wonder if that was intentional. But their message is, well, clearly this is intentional. I mean, uh, but their, their message seems to be a little muddled. On one hand... No, it's Ron Paul's message. They're pretty clearly taking Ron Paul's message and trying to apply it. Well, I know you don't like to imagine that Ron Paul is for closing the borders down, but that's what he said in both of his campaigns. Wait, no, that's not really what Ron Paul huh? said. Yeah, Ron Paul said, let's close the borders down and get this country in order, and then you can start opening them up. Mm, when we had Ron Paul on and we asked him questions about that or a question about that back in the 07, 08 campaign, I think it was, uh, he he was a little dodgy with his answer, but ultimately he said that you know if the United States was a more free place, that open borders would not be a problem. Agreed. So I he's think not he believes that. Closed but it's, he doesn't believe that it's a free place. Uh -huh. <laughs> so since he's out of that, he's and he's in Texas. He's advocates for closed borders, and that's what he says. I, okay, I, I haven't heard him say that. And when we interviewed him, he those didn't are the say list. That. Those are the interview questions. Not heard him say it. I don't know. You know, I I can't go listening to a bunch of audio. Yeah. For you, well, he didn't say it when we talked to him, so that's all I that's all I have to go on. Anyway, uh, so yeah, their their message here seems to be a little muddled in that on one hand they're saying, well, we'd prefer you not uh, bomb us, but on the other hand they're basically saying we don't care if you bomb us. Go ahead, we're ready for you. We're dug in. We're tough. We know how to fight. So. I don't really know what they want. I, I would agree. Exactly. Here we go. I'm horrified if this is the real reason, but apologies to Tom Friedman if I'm overreacting. For the Islamic State, it's a win-win situation. If these executions force public outcry or a policy change, that is a huge victory. And if they only goad our governments into dropping more bombs and spending millions more dollars, making our countries weaker in the process, then that is a victory too. Now that's an interesting point. So he's suggesting that the bombing of the infrastructure of the countries will simply make it easier for ISIS to take hold. What do you think about that one? Um, so what? Well, he's he's because you said they can just eliminate them with bombs, Mark. That's what you said. I said they could. I don't. I don't think they're going to use intercontinental ballistic missiles, but they could. Um, by that I mean those big nuclear warhead kind of things. Oh, okay. Um, that's what an intercontinental ballistic missile is. It's something that's shot from South Dakota and intended to blow up Moscow. Hmm. Um, I don't think they're going to do that, but I think that he's, I think he's being rather optimistic if he thinks that anybody in ISIS a lot is going today is going to be alive to enjoy the victory of the United States and Great Britain spending way too much money and impoverishing themselves and the states themselves collapsing as a result. Why would you think they wouldn't be alive? I mean, he's... Because they're going to die. Why? Why would you say that? Why are United you so optimistic about that? He says these guys have been around for decades. They've been through all kinds of wars. These if are the, fairly resilient folks. If the United States and Great Britain field armies in the Middle East, mm -hmm. again, hundreds of thousands of soldiers, they're going to hunt down these ISIS people and they're going to die. The Iraq military defeated... These Shiites that ran, um, you know, cut and run previously defeated ISIS today. ISIS is no great military. If you if they don't, you can't go toe to toe with the United States. You can run around and skulk about in the darkness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, uh, you can't go toe to toe. It does seem to me that it would encourage the people who get bombed to support 
the opposition to the people who did the bombing. So if, if you're living in um, Syria or Iraq or any places that get bombed and then ISIS comes in and says, hey, we're going to rebuild things for you. We're going to make it better. Uh, the, the U.S. did this to you. It, it might make the people who live there already say, all right, maybe this ISIS group. Uh, not so bad. The well, U.S. is really bad. That's mm. the same reasoning that's behind the beheading thing. It might make, uh, you know, mm. it, it might make the U.S. population want to go after ISIS. It might make the U.S. population say, yeah, we're not so interested. It's really difficult to know. It's not like your average person in the Middle East is so uninformed that they don't know that, you know, that the United States is here to fight ISIS because ISIS has been chopping heads off. Hey, you know, could you stop chopping heads off of people or whatever? Because I don't think you'd get the Americans to go in and support the Iraqis in their fight against ISIS if you didn't chop Americans' heads off. I tend to uh, I, I tend to agree with that, and that's why I feel like, you know, who is ISIS? Is ISIS really who they purport to be, or are they just some sort of CIA operation? I have no clue. I don't know it's either. It's bizarre. Yeah, and this video makes things even more confusing. There's more coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. Got about a minute of this left. More on the way. This is Free Talk Live. 855 450 3733. Share your thoughts. Question Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer Yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganix. Life's getting better. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel, hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Last month, the FDA approved Halusex, a new class of weight loss drug that helps users avoid overeating by producing nightmarish hallucinations whenever food is around. Halusex targets the brain's cerebral cortex, stimulating the centers responsible for fear and visual processing. Test subjects reported an unprecedented decrease in appetite and showed dramatic weight loss, with only 18% reporting night terrors or subsequent cardiac arrest. It's designed to make fatty and sugary foods even scarier. An apple just looks like it has fangs, but a milkshake will threaten you and your family by name. 
Earlier incarnations of the drug proved to be too powerful and produced mental states in which test subjects no longer believed that food had ever existed. An unshakable belief that the subject had to eat all of the food on the planet in order to prevent food from rising up and destroying the human race. Oh, you don't understand how to do this. Or the conviction that food could be negotiated with diplomatically. With the lab report, I'm Aisha Patel. This is the Onion News Network. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll free here. Give us your thoughts on ISIS. What is really going on? Uh, with this alleged group of terrorists. I don't really know if they are who they claim to be, but it's interesting to see what they have to say. And the John Cantley video will continue here. Uh, it is the third propaganda piece that has been released by ISIS in a series of uh, videos where he's just sort of delivering some text to a camera. Uh, he apparently has a teleprompter. Uh, he's talking into an HD video camera, and the production value here is fairly high. It's watchable. Uh, the script is is well written. It's not hard to understand. It's whoever wrote it really understands how to speak English. So we're going to continue with it here in moments. We'll give you the rest of the ISIS or what is alleged to be the ISIS perspective on things. Expresscoin.com is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin, whichever one of the cryptocurrencies you want to get. I'm a fan of uh, Bitcoin, but, I, you know, a lot of the Litecoins, they seem to have some promise to them. Uh, Expresscoin.com makes it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. Um, you can get your cryptocurrencies with a check, a money order, wire transfer, or, and I think this is the best option, you can make a deposit at a local credit union that has shared branching. It's got to have shared branching. You might want to call ahead uh, just to check with it. You don't have to have an account at said credit union. You can just go there and make a deposit. But start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether it's in the U.S. or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app that they've got at their website at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. More with uh, British hostage John Cantley from the ISIS Lend Me Your Ears video series. This is video number four uh, as we continue here with the remaining minute and a half. I have yet to see David Cameron's reaction to the killing of David Haynes, but I'm sure it will be along the lines of Britain is shocked and appalled at this brutal act, and we will not rest until the Islamic State is defeated and those guilty of his murder are brought to justice. But hold on a minute, Prime Minister. You've known about our situation for nearly two years. You chose not to enter negotiations with the Islamic State that might have got us out, and now you want to use these deaths to fan the flames of this war? If that is the case, then I deeply resent it, Prime Minister. Thanks a lot. Fifteen minutes is a long time in politics, said Ruth Sherlock from the Daily Telegraph. From the opening salvos of this new conflict, old habits die hard, and our politicians need to jailbreak from their former ways. One month ago, Obama pressed the button on airstrikes. Now you have to wonder how long his policy of no boots on ground has left to live. Mm. As for the Islamic State, they eagerly wait to see those boots. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, you know, how long will it be before American troops are brought into this? There was another news story I saw about how the Syrian attacks on the U.S. government side aren't going as well as they'd planned. That the you know Free Syrian Army, the supposed group of people they've got on the ground, because again, even though Obama has pledged no ground troops, as was pointed out in one of these ISIS videos, uh, John Cantley pointed out that well, they're still using troops on the ground. They're just not American. American troops on the ground. Yeah. So they've got these free Syrian rebel or free Syrian army guys who are down there. And as he pointed out that, you know, these guys aren't exactly the most principled of uh, folks and they're more likely to sell uh, the armaments that they get from the U.S. to ISIS. ISIS yeah. Uh, and so the, the suggestion in another story I saw was that things aren't going as they expected and the, you know, free Syrian army isn't as good or reliable as they had, the U.S. had hoped. So things are already going awry. 
What will that mean, and how long will it be before the U.S. moves in their own troops? Let's finish with a line from the quotable Michael Schiller. Today's Islamist movement would not have been born without unrelenting U.S. intervention in the Muslim world. All it means is an endless, increasingly widespread and bloody war with Islam. You know, and I think this is very interesting. Um, there's this. And that's correct. I, I, I think so. And here's uh, like right now. Remember, today we have this. My God, the Muslims are crazy. You know, they're backwards. They always have been backwards. Those people have been at war for 2000s years, whatever. You know, the, the rhetoric, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we know what the rhetoric sounds like, but we didn't really have that rhetoric in the 80s i don't recall people talking like that the 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 big the boogeyman then was the soviet union and uh, you know it seems like that rhetoric has ramped up as the united states has kind of turned its eye towards the middle east and i can totally understand why how people react to sort of the human nature of it all if you have this occupying force it makes it stands to reason that a faith based group is going to get more and more that stands against this occupying force they're going to have more power they're going to get more popular because to get somebody to fight and die for your cause it's really awesome to offer them virgins and an afterlife and the and the whole thing so it makes some sense that they would go more fundamentalist because the you know here are the people that stand against the folks i don't like and they're offering me eternal life mm -hmm. hmm, maybe i'll go for that and as some people go other people go people are sort of followers I, I, like it's the old there are no atheists in foxholes thing mm. well you brought the foxhole to them the United States, you know, whether whether you believe foreign policy started on 9-11 or not, the United States military and its foreign policy, I shouldn't say the military as much as the United States government's foreign policy, brought the foxhole to these people long before you likely ever knew about the Middle East. And that's why I think they've gone all radical. They don't hate us for our freedoms as much as they hate us for our foreign policy. And then they moved Absolutely. into – And they moved into a um, – a belief system that sort of speaks against our culture. Yeah, that makes some sense. You always, you know, governments have always, well, let's see, what do we want to gain from this country? Okay, we want this. And now how do we vilify them? How do we call them slanty-eyed Japs or Tojo or whatever we're going to call them? It's the same thing over and over again. Not have been born without unrelenting U.S. intervention in the Muslim world. All it means is an endless, increasingly widespread and bloody war with Islam. Join me again for the next program. Yeah. I we hope you make it, Sean. We certainly will. Yeah. It'll be really sad to uh, have him decapitated at the end of, uh, of all of these, but I suspect that's what we'll end up seeing. I have to say, as confusing as it is to watch some of these videos, it's really helpful to have, uh, you know, talking heads explaining each side of their story. Isn't it would it be though? like, you know, you Dr. Evil this. and Austin Powers or whoever, you know, James Bond and his villains, like having discussions about, you know, what their sides are and what they think policy should be. This is very interesting. Well, right. I mean, thanks to the Internet. This never would have been possible 30, 20 years ago, right? Right. I think that this is truly the best way to sort of I, I think we're better off getting both sides of this and i and i think it's reprehensible that major media outlets are not giving us both sides um i i think that if you want to hear good critique of the united states's policy north korea has some good critique you got to look <laughs> at the organ well i i think there are a bunch of nuts um i'd say russia today is a better source okay. for critiquing the uh, the united states well, they've policy got, they've got uh, in, news organizations in the country but we've seen ret rhetorical videos from i've seen them i don't know if you've yeah. seen them from north korea and i'm like well yeah, yeah uh-huh Mm, uh-huh. Like listening to them. And it seems like people have to be like it's sports teams or something. Hey, look, I live here in the United States. I, I generally think the United States is a pretty darn good country, and it's certainly a great place to make a living. And I hope it's that it continues. going down on the list of economic freedom. That's another headline I've got tonight. I hope it continues to, to, to st still be a good place, but I, I have my doubts. I wouldn't want to live in North Korea, but I can listen to what they say and hear the validity of the critiques. Yeah, sure. But so many people just want to say, nope, can't listen to that. That's bad, bad, bad. You're on this team, not on that team. Mm. And what that does is that gives cover for crooked politicians in Washington, D.C. to do whatever they want.
Share your thoughts with us here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. And by the way, when I say the U.S. is going down on the list of economic freedom, I mean it's getting worse. Their position on the list, not improving. Uh, I've got that news story. Plus, Derek J. is going to fill us in on the crazy marijuana decriminalization supporters in Philadelphia. We've got that story coming up as well. It's Free Talk Live. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asianrunlikehellguide.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live. We will take your calls toll-free about anything you want to discuss. 855-453 is the number. That's 855-450-3733. Also, you may join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. We've been talking about ISIS and the propaganda videos that they've been releasing. But there's been some other related news that I think is worth talking about. You may recall, uh, and we'll get into the crazy Philadelphia marijuana decriminalization news here in a little bit. And Derek J has the inside scoop because he used to live there. So he knows some of these people. Uh, but uh, before we go back to uh, the United States, let's stick with a little bit more ISIS news. In the last week, you may recall, it was actually the weekend we were at the uh, Bitcoin convention down in Disney. There was a young man who was arrested. I think he's like 19 or 20 years old. And he was uh, arrested at the Chicago O'Hare Airport for attempting to leave the country to allegedly join ISIS. Mm -hmm. So what had happened was the uh, Austrian airlines had informed the U.S. government, had informed the FBI that this young man had purchased a ticket, and his name was, you know, it sounded very Middle Eastern. So a guy with a Middle Eastern-sounding name had purchased a ticket to Turkey. So apparently that's enough reason to, you know, conduct an investigation and they did conduct this investigation. They uh, waylaid the gentleman at the airport. They held him uh, for questioning. He allegedly waived his right to remain silent and answered uh, said questions. At the same time, they raided his house. They went through his personal belongings and his family's home. And they discovered what they claimed were maps of him planning his uh, his move to, Tur you know, flying to Turkey. And then uh, I think he was going to Syria or Iraq uh, after that. Weren't those like goofy cartoon maps that Something had like drawn, yeah. <laughs> some drawing of really arrows? Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but it's like so, a treasure map that a, a kid might use. But my point on that story was what if he changed his mind? What if, OK, let's let's believe that this guy really was planning on joining ISIS and that he wasn't cajoled into it by some undercover FBI agent, as we've seen with a lot of these alleged terrorist plots that have been busted up over the last decade here in the United States, where it turns out it was actually an FBI agent who was the whole time sort of trying to get some young dupe into agreeing to bomb something that he otherwise wouldn't have wanted to bomb because he wouldn't have really thought about it they too They spent hard. a lot of time doing that. And he wouldn't have had the money or the resources, but the FBI provides the money and they provide the resources and they give you the bomb and they give you the van and they give you the hotel to stay in. I mean, just it was great. All these stories are so crazy. So we don't really know what led this young man up to wanting to join ISIS, but that's the story, is that he wanted to join ISIS, and now he's facing, oh, I don't know, 15 years at least in prison as a result of that decision. Now, he didn't hurt anybody, and maybe he wouldn't have hurt anybody when he did join ISIS. Or maybe really... he wouldn't have joined ISIS. Maybe he or, would have changed his mind. That was my point. What if he flew into Turkey before he was going to cross over the Syrian border and uh, then ultimately decided... What the hell was I thinking? I'm getting out of here. I'm going back home where I can get some Starbucks or whatever. I mean, anything can happen. And sure. People what if can he, change. What if he, you know, joined ISIS, fought with the, you know, fought with them or, or was with them for a period of time, said, these people are a bunch of crazy lunatics, and then decides, you know what? I'm going to go home, and I'm going to tell the United States government about what I know. Right. He They'd could be, give information. He'd be pretty valuable, wouldn't he? Yeah. Well, guess what? You can't do that. And, in fact, that is exactly, or to some extent, what you just said there, Mark, is almost exactly what's happening now. You may have seen the teenage girl story about the young ladies from Austria who decided they wanted to join ISIS. Yes. Well, guess what? Now one of them wants to come home. Well... Turns out that's not such a, a good plan because there's two main reasons why. Here's the story from Vice News at Vice.com. An Austrian teenager who traveled to Syria to join the Islamic State in April has told her family she wants to come home, but is afraid she'll be unable to do so because of her association with the jihadist fighters. Samra Kesanovic, age 17, made the trip with a friend, age 15-year-old Sabina Selimovic, and the pair are now thought to be living in Raqqa, the group's stronghold in northern Syria. Both girls are also believed to have gotten married and possibly be pregnant. Austrian officials have been widely quoted as saying the girls have expressed their desire to return to their families, but are fearful of the consequences. Kesanovic is said to have contacted her family regarding the situation, though it's unclear whether the other girl has also done so. Now, counterterrorism experts say the girls could face severe punishment from ISIS for speaking out 
amid claims Sounds that, like it. that other foreign fighters who have revealed their dissatisfaction have been tortured. The pair are of Bosnian origin and are thought to have been recruited at a local Vienna mosque. Last month, rumors that one of the girls had died spread on social media, but now those appear to be false. In a letter to their families upon departure from Austria, the girls said they were prepared to die as jihadists, saying, quote, and by the way, the young man who was arrested in Chicago also left a goodbye letter to his parents saying that don't tell the authorities I'm leaving. Uh, their letter allegedly said, quote, no point in looking for us. See you in paradise. We will serve Allah and die for him, unquote. Photos of them wearing burqas. As though Allah needs you to die for him. I mean, if Allah wants to win some war, he doesn't need you to do it. Photos of them wearing burqas, holding Kalashnikovs, and posing with mass jihadists later circulated online. Speaking to Vice News on Monday, Karl Heinz Grunbach, spokesperson for the Austrian government's Ministry of the Interior, said he couldn't comment on the specific case, but insisted there's no law preventing Austrian citizens from traveling to Austria. However, he which is a strange thing out of to Austria. Say. Uh, oh, however, uh, traveling into so there's no law for the, uh, re- preventing them from returning. However, he added that the girls would receive no help to return and could face arrest if they do so. This is a strange thing. So, like on one there's hand, no he's saying, it's returning. not illegal for you to come back. However, we might arrest you for joining ISIS, just like here in the United States. They have a similar law there that, uh, quote, generally speaking, people who went to this region and want to return can hardly be supported by the Austrian authorities due to the given situation. In all cases of returnees, uh, he says there is a judicial investigation with regard to membership in a terroristic organization, unquote. And the actual section of the law of the Austrian Penal Code is Section 278B, and that criminalizes the leading of and participation in a terrorist group and stipulates that the sentence, if convicted, is a prison imprisonment for a term of one to ten years. Which means that this teenage girl, should she want to come home, she's realized this has been a mistake. I'm now pregnant, possibly, and uh, things weren't as I thought they were going to be here in uh, Syria. I'd like to go back home, please. And now the Austrian government is saying, well, little lady... We won't stop you from coming back, but if you do, you might be facing 10 years in prison. Well, as despicable as all governments are who enforce borders like that and then threaten cages for for young ladies who ultimately are making a good decision to choose peace instead of violence, I put a lot of responsibility on her parents and both of their parents. Where were their parents when they just decided to up and join a terrorist organization? They didn't move halfway sh- around the world. I mean, th- they may not have told mom and dad in advance. All right. It but they're, like they they're teenagers letter. who then went halfway across the world to join a terrorist organization, may have gotten pregnant. Not, not really that far. far. It's not that far. <laughs> All right. They traveled. They did travel. They traveled, yes. And. They had to do this somewhat in secret to to hide from their parents. Their parents are obviously not as involved in their lives as maybe they could be, and I that put some responsibility Or maybe there. they have some support for this. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Look, if, if I somehow magically ended up in these uh, young ladies' position, uh, and I had to choose ISIS and uh, being married to whoever these, uh, you know, people are that they're married to. I doubt it was to, their choice. I doubt it was, too. Yeah. Um, I, I can't imagine that they thought this was – I. it all sounds like a terrible idea. I'd take a year in an Austrian prison in a second uh, over <laughs> where they are. What about are. 10? What's that? What about 10? I'd, I think that you likely can provide enough information to the – To reduce the – Yeah, like I think that we can probably talk this out. I think that a year in an Austrian prison sounds kind of stiff for what they'd give. when they, If they cooperated, you know, you come back and you say, hey, you know, this yeah. is what I saw um, – before I give you any more information, can we talk about uh, substantial assistance for my baby? Um, you know, those kind of things. If you operated in that fashion, I think that you'd probably be okay. I don't mean to just kick a person while they're down and, and say, you know, these girls obviously made a very big mistake, but they made choices. I mean, they're they're nearly adults or they're teenagers. I don't I forget what age it says exactly. 17 and 15. Okay, so... They're responsible for their actions at that age. Absolutely. Yeah. and I they... certainly was held responsible for my actions at 17. Well, you're re- held responsible for your actions even younger than that. And actions have consequences. These choices have consequences. I just wish that their community or their parents or somehow were more involved uh, at the time because they would have prevented them from making these stupid choices. 
Share your thoughts. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Obviously, they've got a lot to really consider because if they do leave, then will ISIS come after them? Will they come after their families? Uh, who knows? It's uh, scary groups on both sides. ISIS is scary, and the Austrian government is scary as well. But, Mark, you do make a good point, though, that at least the eyes of the public would be better on the situation if they were to come back and make sort of a big deal about coming back and... You know, maybe there would be and some European mercy. prisons, not American prisons. You're saying they're better? Much nicer. All right. We'll come back with more here in moments. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Crazy decrim news. Your call is also on the way. Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, October 13th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,223, silver around $17.34, and Bitcoin is trading around $374.25. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, over the weekend, St. Louis protesters and police clashed as 17 people were arrested Sunday for refusing to disperse from a sit-in outside of a convenience store. St. Louis police donned military-style riot gear throughout the weekend as thousands of individuals marched through the streets of Ferguson and nearby Shaw. Last Wednesday, Shaw was the site of another fatal shooting by an off-duty police officer. Activists attempted to stage a sit-in outside of a quick trip store in Shaw. Online video shows the police violently shutting the protest down. Journalist Luke Rudowski with We Are Change and Cassandra Fairbanks of the Free Thought Project were pepper sprayed while filming the scene. Early Monday morning, police in Hong Kong began removing barricades placed by protesters who have occupied parts of the city for the last two weeks. Reuters reported that student protesters continued to face off with police at the main protest site near government buildings downtown. Protesters are seen wearing masks in anticipation of police use of tear gas. The deadly Ebola virus has been contracted by someone inside the United States for the first time. A nurse who had worn protective gear during her extensive contact at a Dallas hospital with an Ebola patient who died tested positive during a preliminary blood test, according to officials on Sunday. 
The woman had on a gown, gloves, mask, and a shield during her multiple visits with Thomas Eric Duncan, but there was a breach in protocol, according to the health officials. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries. Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Be The Media, a workshop, mini conference, and a party exploring alternative media and celebrating the launch of the Liberty Beat GCN partnership. Saturday, October 25th, live streamed at thelibertybeat.com. Be the media and change the world. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 13th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. A former officer with the Houston Police Department has pled guilty to conspiring with others to possess cocaine with the intent to distribute. Marcos Carrion was a five-year veteran of the HPD before a Houston grand jury indicted him on April 16th of this year. Carrion admitted to providing security for drug trades involving 10 kilos of cocaine. Carrion was paid $2,500 for his role in the operation. U.S. District Judge Sim Lake set sentencing for January 8th of 2015. Carrion faces 10 years to life in federal prison. The Rise and Rise of Bitcoin, a feature-length documentary, was released to the public this weekend. The much-anticipated film was in production for several years and follows Daniel Moross, a Bitcoin miner and enthusiast, as he travels the globe with his brother to interview Bitcoin's early adopters. The documentary captures the essence of the Bitcoin movement by showing the human and sometimes raw reality of those who built the network from the ground up. Early miners, Bitcoin startups, and even the programmers that sacrificed massive amounts of time, energy, and sometimes their freedom to bring a decentralized currency to the point of mainstream adoption. The documentary was released via on-demand services this past weekend. You can find the rise and rise of Bitcoin on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, and Comcast. To watch the trailer, host a screening, or even pay in Bitcoin, visit BitcoinDoc.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated. Helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 13th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In local news, 23-year-old graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tissolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tissolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tissolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery and the fact that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. His art is really just the absolute worst. I think we're going to get married someday. And now for This Week in Tech, brought to you by LG. An excited groom sends text messages to his buddies during his bride's vow and a collection of VHS tapes are held onto for one more year. In other news, a burglar makes sure to crack the glass on a family portrait before leaving. There's nothing in the employee handbook about groping dead co-workers, an employee says. And a report finds that nobody's heard from David Blaine in a while, so somebody should probably check to see if he died in one of those things. Mere seconds have passed, yet we feel as though we've known you a thousand lifetimes. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free, bring up anything here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Coming up, Derek J. will be telling us about a bizarre development in the world of decriminalization of cannabis. And I'm a huge fan of the idea of decriminalizing drugs, uh, legalizing them. Eh, I'm not as much of a fan of I like the idea of full decriminalization where the government does not control it at all. I think that's the best option. No one's ever tried that option. Hopefully we'll get to see that option tried. Well, it's been somewhere. tried. It's just been some time. Well, when was it tried? Well, cannabis was unregulated 
prior to the That's not early. decriminalization. Decriminalization would be taking something from a criminal status and then removing it from its criminal status. You're talking about that there was a time when it was not regulated. And that much is true. Okay. You're right about that. Um, so I would like to see that time come around again, which would require, in my opinion, full decriminalization. We'll talk about what bizarre thing some of the decrim advocates are doing in uh, Philly here in moments. And But before we do that, we're going to go to your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Will on the line in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hello, Will. Hey, what's up, guys? How are we doing tonight? Hey, it's hey. Will. Will Colley from Muslims for Liberty. Hey, what's on your mind? Not a whole. I actually had something that I was going to call in to talk to you guys about, a, uh, a breaking news story. But I heard what you guys were talking about before the break. So, you know, having, you know, my you know expertise, I figured I would throw a little bit in the hat on that. You talking uh, about the uh, teenage girls, one of girls. whom uh, allegedly they both allegedly went over to join ISIS. Now one of them says things weren't as they seemed, and she wants to come home. Yeah, well, to give you an uh, an idea, basically, of the uh, level of religious knowledge of the people who are doing these sorts of things, uh, not just the girls, but any you know teenager who basically runs away from home to go and and join these military campaigns. Because, you know, the letter that you, you said, you know, basically was stating that they were running away, you know, like, don't try to come look for us. Well, that doesn't f- pass the mustard as far as theology is concerned. Um, piece of information uh, from uh, religious text. Uh, s- there's multiple narrations, even the fatwa factories that usually encourage extremism have to acknowledge you have to you have to have your parents permission in order to go on a military campaign. Hmm. Um, Abdullah ibn Umar uh, relates that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked his permission to join in a military effort. The Prophet Sallallahu asked him, are your parents alive? The man replied, yes. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, by serving them, you perform your jihad. That's in Bukhari, Nasa'i, Sunan Abu Dawood, and al Timrithi, the three major collections of Hadith. But what if your There's parents that... are evil? What do you mean if your parents are evil? Well, if your parents are evil and you serve them, that's not a good thing. Well, no. This is saying that if you want to go on a military campaign, you have to ask their permission. So doing things for them rather than going to fight war, are the same. So what you're saying is that if these ISIS cats actually knew, um, you know, the proper Muslim uh, traditions, that they would never have accepted these uh, teenage girls who did not have that permission. Yeah, not only that, but the Mm. girls themselves having any knowledge would never have left without their parents' permission. Another narration says that a man came to the Prophet Solomon and said, O messenger of God, I want to join you in your military efforts, and I have come while my parents are crying. And the Prophet Solomon responded to him, Then go back to them and let them laugh just as you have made them cry. So to take care of your parents in their age is seen as a more worthy effort uh, than fighting in a military campaign. Hmm. And it's something that's told, like, you got to take care of that first before you worry about these other things over here. So the level of knowledge, both of the people who accepted these, these, these recruits and the recruits themselves is shown by, you know, agreed upon, you know, theology in the Muslim faith that it's, it's, it's completely illegitimate. It shows you that they literally have no idea what they're talking about. Sounds like they're more interested in power than piety. Basically, that's usually what happens when religion becomes used for these ends, is it's more about using a collectivist idea uh, to gain power than Amen to that. about <laughs> applying those principles. All right, cool, man. I'm glad you called to clarify that. But you were calling with some sort of breaking news, so feel free to go ahead and break whatever that news was. Well, yeah, they. Uh, you guys know about what happened in Oklahoma, and when I called you no, guys, no, what no, happened what? in Oklahoma? Well, you know the beheading, like two weeks ago. Oh, that, it, yeah, uh, with the the workplace beheading. Yeah. Thing. Well, we spoke to you guys before and talked about how we were raising money for the families who were who were victimized through this violent attack. Mm-hmm. Wow. The beheading yep. by a guy who really didn't seem to know his stuff when it came to being a Muslim. From, from or anything else us. for that matter. <laughs> yeah. This guy was really confused and crazy. Um, but anyway, so you at Muslims for Liberty, uh, that's Muslims, the number four, liberty.org, were raising that money? Well, Muslims for Liberty, Oklahoma, our state chapter, was okay. raising the money. And uh, Pris- Priscilla Khader, 
who is the basically the our representative on the ground in Oklahoma, went to a town hall meeting today that was co-hosted by John Bennett, a uh, Republican uh, representative at a local church that was a speech by Frank Gaffney, uh, as well as, of course, a member of the C, a former member of the CIA and the pastor of the church. And Muslims for Liberty's representatives were forcibly removed from the event today uh, because uh, the statement of the police was w- veiled women are not allowed on the premises. Hmm. And where was this again? Now, what kind of veil are we talking wait, wait, about? Wait, where, where was this? A hijab. Just a hijab. Uh, this was in Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, now, the, ad- the advertisement stated Muslims are more than welcome to attend, but that people of no faith will be allowed to ask any questions at a town hall meeting. So this was on town property? I'm sorry, I missed that where you no, said this. This was, at a, this was at a church. At a church, okay. okay. This was at a church, and the invitation was listed as open to all people of all faiths, but that it would be a town hall where, oddly enough, questions wouldn't be allowed to be asked of the people speaking. Um, but as I said, uh, Muslims for Liberty's representatives were forcibly removed by the police uh, for their dress. Today. And a hijab, is that just the yes. where they wrap around the head and sort of around the face, but the face is showing? Yeah, it's like what you guys see my wife wear. Yes, uh, yes, that exactly. I just did a Google image search, and you've described that correctly, Mark. Yeah. So the full face is visible. Only the ears would not be visible. And hair. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And some of the, yeah. The, the niqab is the, is the other thing that most people are thinking about. As a matter of fact, Adam Bates with the Cato Institute was also removed with this group. Uh, I think about five people were forcibly removed. Uh, by the police at gunpoint for wow. uh, yeah for clothing choices. And this was at a fundraiser for the victims' families. No, 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 no. This was at I'm a sorry. town hall to dis- that uh, a, a church put together to discuss the dangers of Islam to Oklahoma. Oh, I'm and, so sorry. I'm not totally yeah. mixed Muslims up what was being said. Muslims for Liberty went to challenge Frank Gaffney, the the speaker from the. Gotcha. Uh, Center for Security Policy. He's uh, he's funded by a lot of military industrial complex types, and so they were uh, using. Just to be clear, the the supposed town meeting that happened on private church property, the town used the fact that they were on private property to essentially restrict who could access this ostensibly public meeting. Basically, yes. Wow. <laughs> Is there video of this happening? By the way. Supposed to be. There's supposed to be. We're waiting on it. The media was there and caught most of it on camera as well. So we're waiting on that that video to come out. But I figured the quickest way to get to the most people the fastest is to tell the guys at Free Talk Live. You know, um, Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Remember that every time it sort of comes up, why aren't Muslims speaking out against this violence? Well, one of the reasons is it's really difficult for Muslims who are, you know. Don't even let them get near the microphone. Right, he gave them the, the microphone if they have some reasonable stance or want to ask hard questions of people who, you know, just kind of make stuff up. Good call, Will. Thanks for sharing, and let us know as things develop there. And I'm sorry I wasn't paying enough attention. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But that's why I ask questions, because uh, I want to make sure I'm understanding what's being said. And I'm not afraid to look like I'm wrong. And you shouldn't either. Call up. Bring up whatever's on your mind here. We'll talk to you. 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the crazy news. That Derek J has to share. Just bizarre. Uh, this is the most bizarre story of the night, in my opinion, uh, that we're going to get to coming up here in moments uh, out of Philadelphia. The marijuana decriminalization movement doing something that is really unexplainable. 855 450 free. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and, of course... OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's the uh, toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. Hey, Bitcoin, the price is coming back up. It's getting close to around 400 now. And uh, for the last week or two, it's been a little bit down, closer to 3, 320, 350. Uh, But it's on the uh, the way back up. Uh, Maybe it'll continue shooting up. Who knows what's going to happen with the Bitcoin price. But one thing you know for sure is that you can collect 38 Bitcoin, whatever the price of it happens to be. You can collect 38 of them for just one of the bounties available right now at BitcoinBountyHunter.com. You can place your own bounty there if you'd like, or you can even add to the ones that are there. You can use your investigative skills and collect on that bounty. Look, the so-called authorities aren't going to be solving these cases. It'll be done by people like you who can profit from your work and your skills. Go check out BitcoinBountyHunter.com. As we continue here, Derek J. will be telling us shortly about some crazy news out of Philadelphia. Just bizarre behavior on the part of some of the decrim activists there. But first, we go to Arizona, where James is on the line, calling in, I believe, for the first time via Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live. You know, rather than blaming American foreign policy or giving speeches on bad Islamic theologians, it would have been nice to hear just one Muslim for liberty 
just blame Caliph and Baghdadi and his very real willing executioners you can all go and see on Vice News. Chanting, literally, Allah is great, Muhammad is his messenger, and death to the infidels, because these ISIS crackers take deadly seriously the warmongering passages in the Quran and the Hadith and are willing to put their lives on the line because of it. And, now, isn't it true that there's and, uh, Christians who also take, you know, war pretty seriously? They're, most of the guys in the military probably would call themselves Christians, right? Yeah, my dad was a devout Christian who was in the military for over 20 years. Right, so there's plenty of killers then, in all religions. Uh, there's difference between killing and murder and cold-blooded murder, chopping people's heads off that didn't deserve it. But uh, in this uh, th Nazis this Muslims for Liberty world. thing, uh, James, uh, this Muslim for Liberty oh, thing, to me, Minister. they're going – to an event that's not about ISIS, but about a killing where somebody got themselves beheaded by somebody who was not really even a Muslim. Uh, apparently, was just sort of mentally ill and kind of shoved a bunch of religions together. So it would be weird for the uh, Muslims for Liberty to sort of stand out there and give a speech about ISIS when that's not what the subject at hand is. I was referring to Will uh, fo fo Foley, Foley. Not what happened in Oklahoma he, today. He has uh, denounced ISIS, ISIS on many occasions. Yeah, we had show. him on for I, three I, hours. I know I, heard, I know. I heard all the challenging questions of which there were not one for the three hours. Why would there be a challenging panic. question? He answers them all. People I'm, called in. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Ian, by the way, your co-host, who said that Will Phoney answered a m bunch of challenging questions. No, he didn't. He didn't get one. Yeah, he but did. I, Several people I, called in. He got calls all, all night long when he was on with us a couple weeks ago on a Saturday night. Uh, but by the way, I'd like okay. to compliment you, James. If, 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 Will, if Will Foley was on Free Talk Will Live Coley. for— Will Coley. Will Coley, excuse me, uh, was on Free Talk Live for three hours, and he didn't get a single challenging question from our listeners, that says something more about America than it does about Muslims for Liberty. No, it says something about your show and its listeners, who are all a bunch of— sycophants and they all listen to you are <laughs> out of your mind this show is on the same stations as rush limbaugh and sean hannity they're the same people listening you're calling the average american republican a sycophant thanks for the call james i just want to compliment you by the way uh your call sounded great tonight the skype really it sounds very different on skype and i think it's a preferred clear. way preferred way to uh, to have james call into the show thanks for the call the uh toll free number tonight 855 450 free and I don't know what James could have called in that night when uh, Will Coley was was on the line. I don't know if he did or not. I don't think he did. So anyway, uh, toll free. And by the way, Muslims the number four Liberty dot org is their website. If you want to reach directly out to Will, I'm sure you could do that. I mean, if you've got some challenging questions for him, I don't know how much time he has to answer a bunch of emails, but you know, maybe he will. I don't know. Uh, so feel free to try to reach out to them over at Muslims the number four Liberty dot org. We'll continue here. You can bring up anything you want. Philadelphia, there were uh, some pretty epic things that happened, Derek J. When you were gone, you left uh, Keene, New Hampshire on your exile tour after Derek J.'s victimless crime spree. You were uh, basically on a suspended sentence, and you didn't really want to risk being here for that period of time, which was completely reasonable. So you took off. Ultimately, you went to D.C. and then back home to the Philadelphia area. Yeah, I traveled across the country to some other places following civil disobedience, like Wisconsin, where there was a farmer who was on trial for That's raw right. milk. I went to Michigan to follow another farmer who was on trial for illegal pigs. So I did travel a bit, and people can see those videos at DerekJ.me. But when you were back at home, or what was home for a long time for you, uh, yes. in the Philadelphia area, uh, you hooked up with this uh, Smoke Down Prohibition group. Yeah, and that Who was really they? cool. So uh, Smoke Down Prohibition is something that's been happening for years. It was started by a man who calls himself N.J. Weedman, and uh, he's something of a— Love that guy. We've yes, had him on the show. Something of a hero of mine, a very courageous man who decided— that he was just going to sit out at the First Amendment Stone in Philadelphia. And this is a, a big, popular uh, downtown district area. It's part of Old City, so it's where you walk around. Uh, you can see the back of the $100 bill 
but in real life, you know, it's it's right there. Okay. Liberty Hall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Something. Like uh, that. Independence Hall. Independence Hall. I'm sorry. That's where the bell is, right? Yes. There is a bell. There's a Liberty Bell there. It's one Edgar big Allen field. Edgar Allan Poe's house is uh, just a few blocks yeah. away. I went yeah. there as a kid. It's really quaint and cute, and it's a great place for a demonstration. It's actually where I got my activist career started, hmm. holding signs out on that First Amendment stone. Well, same with N.J. Weedman. He decided to smoke some joints out there in public and, and make a display of it. He didn't have any issues, and he. He did this on a pretty regular basis. It grew to be a bigger thing. Uh, after it died down a little bit, he decided to stop doing it. Um, he was living in California for just different reasons. It sort of um, dissolved. But some activists took on the torch and they said, you know, this decriminalization thing or this prohibition thing, it's got to go. It's been too long. We enjoy smoking cannabis it's good for medical reasons it's good for recreation so what's the deal why are we still ending up in cages for smoking it we should do this publicly make a big demonstration about mm -hmm. it and show the police we're not afraid we're going to do this anyway it's just a harmless plant and there was a lot awesome. yeah it was a really cool event they decided to do it on the third or fourth saturday of each month and it became a regular thing for almost a year there were some pretty famous arrests yeah in, the police cracked down right? in may of 2013 and people can find that video uh those there are several videos all over youtube adam kokesh was arrested and one of the main activist organizers na po yeah and uh, that was tragic in my opinion mm -hmm. I, I hated seeing those people just carted away brutalized by the police right in front of everyone right on camera yeah, it was crazy and then slapped with felonies they were uh, slapped with pretty serious charges Whoa. for uh, smoking cannabis right on the what is federal property because this oh my is gosh. the federal property so that right? was their intention was to challenge the feds no I don't think so. I don't think that this was... Oh, I thought they, they were like, that. hey, it's a Philadelphia property. Oh, wait, this mm. is, you know, Independence Hall. It's a historic oh, monument. It's a, it's a national thing. Yeah, it's a so, felony to smoke pot on well, federal I actually, I think it was actually... It ended up being less than they expected. It ended up only being a citation, when it clearly could have been a felony, but they were only cited by mm. these park rangers. So it was confusing, but they can, decided to come back next month. And there were even more people the next month, and even more people the month after that. And these things really grew. Catch up to today because there's developing news about what's going on with the decrim movement in Philly, and it's very strange. We'll get into it here and see if we can figure it out. 855 450 free. Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Free speech is protected on the Internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do... The Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. 
IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and hook yourself up with free coffee. An entire pound. Yeah. Delicious coffee, too. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. And you're not going to find better coffee than BuzzBox Coffee. You're also not going to find a coffee company that has the same concern for uh, people around the world. They have a co-op program that they allow farmers to get into to grow their food. Um, they really can, coffee I should say, uh, they really can claim this whole fair trade title. Most of the fair trade coffee you're going to uh, be buying is well, there's just really the ones that actually are doing uh, doing fair trade are basically supporting unions <laughs> that uh, exclude people, and the ones and a lot of them don't like include twenty percent of beans or something like that, so they can slap the label on. So it's a bunch of bull crap, um, largely. Buzzbox, not so much. They also give us a certain amount of profits that we can put towards, uh, you know, microloans through Kiva and help people around the world. Uh, we've helped people in. Um, Peru, in Gaza, in Armenia, and several other countries. So go check it out and get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com and help us give other folks a hand up. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Derek J is here with us tonight, and he spent a lot of his life in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And as an activist, that's where you got your feet wet uh, as an activist. And then you moved to Keene, and then you ultimately moved back to Philly for a little while due to an exile tour. You had to you essentially had to leave Keene for your own personal safety due to the state threatening you uh, with more jail time. And uh, while you were back in Philly, you got involved with Smoke Down Prohibition, which is uh, was a group of cannabis decrim slash legalization activists who were on a monthly basis going uh, into downtown Philly, and they were smoking cannabis in public. And it sounded like a very exciting thing. There were uh, arrests that were being made, high-profile arrests uh, were mm -hmm. being made, all on video. The police were being ridiculous and, uh, and thuggish and terrible. And there was, you know, a lot of buzz around this. And apparently they continued on. Like, the, uh, the arrest didn't stop smoke down prohibition. That's right. And they were only emboldened by the arrests, and they continued. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, they just sort of died off. And, That's what uh, happens with activism. You know, I don't understand why exactly, because they were really successful, and it seemed like they were gaining momentum. But uh, 
Well, the 420s There's, died off here in Keene, too, once we basically conquered Keene Central Square as a demilitarized zone for cannabis smoking. It no longer became exciting to go there in mass and smoke cannabis. Just, well, you know, kind of petered out over time. Well, despite the fact that the protests seemed to end, there were still changes happening within the government. They decided in Philadelphia recently to declare cannabis decriminalized. So hmm. that's a new rule. Uh, it's not that way, I think, throughout Pennsylvania. I think it's just Philadelphia, which is deciding to decriminalize cannabis. How does that work? What is the, the actual purported penalty for cannabis in Philly now? Apparently, it's I, I don't know the specifics. It's uh, probably um, up to an ounce. You get a fine of uh, $100. Whereas previously they were arresting people for small amounts. Yeah, and it was a, a crime punishable, I, I think, by up to a year in jail, something like that, a, a standard misdemeanor. Okay. And a $1,000 fine, most likely, something like that. So the city council decided that, you know, they'd had Did enough of this. Did people go to jail for possession of a joint or some small amount of marijuana for any period of time? Or is it really sure. just an extortion racket yes. to get money out of them? Yes, people went to jail. People I know went to jail in Philadelphia for because because they didn't pay the fine or just and, – and was this to go to jail and get out the next day kind of jail? Or are we talking about go to jail and serve a year for the possession of under a quarter ounce of marijuana? No, it's usually – you go to jail, you get arrested, you do the, the um, arraignment and either plead guilty or not guilty. If you plead guilty, usually you can work some sort of deal with the prosecutor right. where you just pay – Just money. You just pay money and then you don't have to go to jail. That's okay. the standard way for most people. Okay. But, right, that's the system. They, you know, they give you a little taste of jail, and they say, "You don't want to go back here now, do you? Give us four hundred dollars or whatever." Right. So the government guys reduced the the penalty. They made it only a ticketable offense. And when did that happen? When did that change? Take this effect? takes place October twentieth. Okay, so, so it has not yet happened. Okay. Yes. So we're so, one week out. Yep. And this news story just broke today at Metro.us. Philadelphia police agree to write weed citation for advocate. And this is one of the guys who I knew from Smoke Down Prohibition. So I'm really surprised. This What's his name? Cannabis advocate. His name is Michael Whiter. Okay. Because we got a guy on the phone who says you told him to call in named Chris. Chris Goldstein. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he would be another terrific person to interview got with uh, Philly Normal. So... Just reading from the article here, on the day Philadelphia becomes the largest American city to decriminalize small amounts of marijuana, police will deliver the first citation with a handshake. Weed activist Michael Whiter's request to earn the first pot citation on October 20th was accepted Monday. <laughs> yeah, we'll take more money from you. Yeah. By Philadelphia Police Chief Inspector Joe Sullivan. Whiter age 33 80 age 38 called Sullivan's participation an olive branch because he's been meeting with us and working with us to help keep everything peaceful Sullivan and Steve Glenn commander of the civil affairs unit have met regularly with a few marijuana enthusiasts and regular protesters including wider at coffee shops across the city for the better part of a year the goal of the so-called donut summits was to find common ground after ra rallies at Independence Mall in recent years became combative. So the common combative. ground is, we'll write you tickets, you'll pay them. Yeah, I guess that seems to be what they've agreed on. It's uh, But of not course, really what it was me. before, it was, uh, you know, we'll arrest you and demand, extort money out of you mm -hmm. and you'll pay it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, also, they were really nasty. I mean, they, they beat up some of these activists while they were Yikes. arresting them and, and serving them citations. Sullivan uh, said while he doesn't agree with the new rules, the act could be symbolic, a peace pipe, if you will. I don't have any problems shaking somebody's hand when I give them a citation, Sullivan said. Swell. The thing that we have victory. Worked, <laughs> the thing that we've worked out here is that we'll be there on the 20th, and we will be prepared to issue a citation in a full, cooperative, and peaceful manner. And what he's referring to is there's a Facebook event, which you can join. It's open to the public. October 20th, there's going to be a wake and bake, uh, meaning there will be people outside of Philadelphia City Hall at Broad and Market Street, and they will be enjoying cannabis openly. Whiter added, quote, The handshake is more for me to thank them for no longer putting cuffs on people like me who need cannabis to maintain a quality of life. I think that's a really confused statement because they absolutely would put cuffs on him if he didn't pay the fine. 
Well, that's, that's true. true. And the reason they're not putting cuffs on him apparently is because the city of Philadelphia is choosing uh, to decriminalize the, the offense. The police will put cuffs on him every single time that the law yeah. allows or the law demands. Did the police speak against decrim in Philadelphia when the city council was proposing it? Not clear. But uh, we do have this uh, clarification on the law. Okay. Mayor Michael Nutter signed the decriminalization of marijuana bill on October 1st. Under the new law, any resident found in possession of 30 grams or fewer, okay. so it's about an ounce, will face a $25 fine for public use, which is what they're doing here uh, on, Monday. On, yeah, on Monday. The fine is $100 or Whoa. up to nine months of community service. The nine mar- months? The marijuana will be confiscated. Yep. When when signing the bill, Nutter adamant, uh, um, adamantly? He, yes, he adamantly stressed that the use and possession of any amount of marijuana remains illegal. Mm. So he wants to thank this activist, wants to thank the police for not putting handcuffs on him. And I, I guess I can understand where he's coming from. Uh, you know, he wants to show gratitude to his oppressor for oppressing him less. Of course, as Mark pointed out, the oppressor is just doing what he's told. And I'm wondering, and I want to bring Chris in here in a moment. So we're going to come back. Chris is somebody who's in Philly. He's on the ground. He's active with this uh, decrim movement. Yes, very. Okay, so maybe he can tell us, did the police, as they do here in New Hampshire all the time, did they come to the proposed, you know, whatever the hearings the city council had about this, did the police come and advocate against decriminalization? That's what I'd like to I'll know. I'll be interested to know. Yeah, more coming up here in moments. And if they did that, then they're not doing you any favors. They're just doing their jobs by not arresting you. 855-450-FREE. That's toll free. 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. That's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. GetTheTea.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. 
Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time, perhaps, for your thoughts. You just dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. There's an activist in Philadelphia, actually multiple activists, but one in specific, is going to be meeting with the police on Monday morning as a decriminalization law or ordinance goes into effect there, making it so that possession of up to an ounce of cannabis will no longer be an arrestable offense. And that's very interesting. There was some uh, re – the report that you were reading, Derek J., where was it from? Uh, Metro.us. Philly Metro. Uh, the – that report was saying this is for residents of Philly, which really brings me to an important question, which Daryl uh, was listening. He pointed this out. Is it only for residents of Philadelphia, meaning that if you live somewhere else in uh, Pennsylvania, that you will be arrested in Philly? That's something I want to know. Let's bring Chris on the line here, who is in Pennsylvania. And Chris, you are of uh, Pennsylvania Normal. Is that correct? I'm with uh, Philly Normal, and uh, we have a number of chapters around Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pittsburgh. But I'm with I'm the co-chair of Philly Normal here in Philly. Welcome to Free Talk Live. I appreciate you uh, calling in tonight here to to bring some expertise to the table on this uh, d d strange decriminalization situation. Did the Metro have it right when they said this only applies to Philly residents, meaning that if someone's coming from, say, Pittsburgh uh, and they're in town and they're smoking a joint, will they be arrested, or will they also just be issued a, a summons? Yeah, that's not how I read it. Um, the decrim ordinance is for anyone in Philadelphia um, who is caught with marijuana, and as long as they have identification. Now, again, the, you know, the interesting thing about decriminalizing it at the municipal level is that it doesn't change state law, of course, and we're still working on that. You know, some states have decriminalized marijuana outright, Oregon being one of them. New York State decriminalized marijuana in 1977. But here's the weird caveat of that. There's something in the law that says marijuana in public view. So what happens in New York City, the New York City police in the 1980s have been using that public view portion of the law to make New York City the marijuana arrest capital of this entire country, Whoa. even though New York State decriminalized it in 1977. So, you know, there's, there's all these weird twists. And, and again, this is kind of the patchwork of laws. But no, the way the decrim ordinance works in Philadelphia now you can be issued a city civil citation for marijuana possession or smoking it in public. It's a $25 fine if you're just in possession, and it's $100 if you're smoking in public. And as long as you have your identification, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, as long as you don't uh, resist and, um, you know, the jury's out on what that actually means these days other than mm. complete subservience, but, um, you know, as long as you don't give the police any trouble, uh, they're going to give you a $25 ticket, and it is a big difference. I mean, so keep in, in mind theory, that, before you go yeah. on, in theory, if it was a state police officer, then they could arrest you in Philly. Yeah, that's true. And um, they're at – okay, so I've studied the marijuana arrest statistics in Philly uh, going back to 2008. Um, for the last you know six years or so, we've been looking and analyzing these arrest numbers. What's interesting is that Pennsylvania is one of only two states where anyone in the public can do that. 
Our uniform crime reporting system is an open and fully sunshine-filled database, so we've been able to look at these arrests. So in Philly, there are about 4,300 adults arrested for possession of marijuana, 30 grams or less. And state police, the state police troop in Philly, arrest 200 people a year. Mm. So, yeah, they arrest people, but it's only about 200 a year. Here's the difference, though. In the rest of Pennsylvania, and even the state police in Philly, they didn't usually put you in handcuffs. They mailed you a summons after the encounter. And that's why Philly needed to make this change so bad, is that Philadelphia city police had a policy of mandatory custodial arrest, oh, wow. handcuffs and a holding cell for anything from a roach on up to 30 grams. So, you know, it's costing the, you know, it's costing the city millions yeah, of dollars. It's going to free up and, a lot of police hours because that's a lot of time it takes to take somebody, cuff them, put them in a cruiser, take them down to the station, book them and, you know, all that stuff. So um, I, this is definitely going to be a time saver. It's going to be a money saver. Another question I had for you, though, I presume you were at some of these hearings at the uh, the city council where they were proposing this? Oh, yeah. I testified at the hearings and um, was present for most of the hearings. And Did, I think I heard your question before. You were wondering if the police department had testified at the hearing. Yeah, and what was their and, position on this? Well, okay, so uh, it's a little nuanced. On one hand, they didn't really come out and testify against the bill. Um, the mayor's office did, and the sort of um, uh, Mike Resnick, who's in charge of the public safety division, which oversees the police department, he's the one who came out and testified against the bill. Mm. On the other hand, you had police commissioner uh, Charles Ramsey, who used to be the police commissioner in Washington, D.C., he's known as kind of a hard-nosed guy. And I certainly had plenty of interactions with him when I was at Occupy Philadelphia three years ago. Um, but at the at the same regard, Ramsey came out in the press and said, "We don't care what the city council went before it was fully passed. Said we don't care what the city council is going to do. We're just going to follow state law and keep arresting people." Hmm. Um, and that's a problem because in other places, like like again, New York City was an example. They decided to keep arresting people. Chicago did the same thing three years ago. Chicago decriminalized marijuana, and they put this fine structure in place. But only 7% of those who are caught by police are given the tickets. So we wanted to see something different. So uh, the councilman who sponsored this bill, James Kenney, and, and keep in mind that when this new civil citation was passed, it was a super majority of the city council. I mean, we're talking 15 members of a 17-member council voted for it. And Mayor Nutter initially, along with Commissioner Ramsey, said they didn't like it. They weren't going to follow it. Now, all of a sudden, you know, in this eight-week period, all of a sudden they changed their tune. They flipped 180, and they said not only did the mayor say he was going to sign the bill um, with the caveat that there would be this extra $100 fine for public smoking, but the police commissioner has now committed to giving these tickets out. So we actually think it's going to get implemented um, in a fair manner. We expect to see at least 80 percent of those 4,300 arrests turn into tickets. And, uh, again, having the commitment of the police on this um, is, I guess, you know, that's why Mike Weider is going out there and, and, and doing this. He's a U.S. Marine Corps vet. He served a couple of tours as a U.S. Marine. And he is an underground medical marijuana patient, essentially. He medicates um, for PTSD. Well, that explains his patients. reverence for the police. I mean, if he worked for the military in the past, that sort of makes more sense. Because I I was sitting here when Derek was telling me this off the air, like, why is this guy going and, and voluntarily <laughs> getting a ticket and then not challenging it? Because, you know, the way we look at things here on, on Free Talk Live is if you're going to get a ticket, like if this had happened and you wanted to go out and purposefully get a ticket, then that would be a great time to challenge it in court and, you know, make a bigger public spectacle out of this and waste even more of their time. But he wants to just show how appreciative he is of the fact that he won't be arrested for using his medicine. I guess that makes a little bit more sense. But is he, even though should he be, be appreciative to the police for the, or the city for this, council? Or the city council? That's what I'm kind of not understanding here is, is that... Well, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, again, in a way, the police could have just kept following state law. They could have done what Chicago and New York City did, which hmm. is say, okay, we're going to ignore this civil citation structure and we're just going to keep arresting people. And that's what Mike's trying to do here. He's trying to uh, demonstrate uh, what can really be possible, how easy it can be for them to write the tickets and make their first citation an easy one. Um, again, in the article you noted, uh, you know, we've had these weird sit-down meetings with them, and Mike initiated those. He started tweeting it, and this is, this is like the second-in-command of the police department, um, the chief inspector, Joe Sullivan, uh, who he arranged all this with. And 
Sullivan and the civil affairs guys would meet us for donuts and coffee, and we called it these donut summits between stoners and cops. And it was a little bizarre at times. We'd walk into the Dunkin' Donuts just reeking of marijuana, yeah, of course. and we'd sit down with the cops and have coffee and talk about marijuana policy in Philadelphia. And this, you know, Derek was talking about smoke down prohibition. You know, this is where we're having some real problems because that's when the Philly cops were called in by the feds to try and bust our protest down. So, and as Derek pointed out, they were, it was, it was pretty darn aggressive. I mean, I had never really known that the United States park rangers had riot gear <sighs> in the color of green. Yeah. You know, I guess Bear there cats. are some bears that riot on occasion or something, but, um, no, you know, park rangers, so, what other color would they have? We're short on time here, Chris. <laughs> I want to fast forward to this coming Monday where there's going to be a protest down in front of our smoking smoke out in front of City Hall. Um, I imagine there will be a dozen or so, maybe more. I don't know how big these protests uh, are, but uh, several people are going to be out there smoking cannabis on the very first day of these, this decrim. Do you think, just obviously it's just a prediction shot in the dark here, do you think the police are going to show up with their uh, pads ready to write citations and ring the cash register, or are they going to leave you alone? Well, I would expect, well, first of all, Mike doesn't want a whole lot of people doing it. He wants really? to be the only guy. He wants to be the sacrificial lamb oh. here, and he wants to be the only guy who's doing it. Um, and although that, will, you know, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people in support, although my federal probation right now from smoke down prohibition is going to kind of prevent me from being uh, there. dreaded probation. But Mike, uh, yeah, I, believe me, I was on Willie Nelson's bus. The toughest thing I had to do was turn out on joint. <laughs> Chris, but, we're out of time, um, man. How yeah. do people go to your, uh, what's your website? Do you have one? Uh, check out phillynormal.org. Find us on Facebook and on Twitter at Perfect. phillynormal, P-H-I-L-L-Y-N-O-R-M-L. Good luck out there. Thanks for the call tonight, man. Appreciate I it. I believed everything Thanks, he said yeah. until he uh, said he turned down a joint from Willie Nelson. <laughs> 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 More coming up here uh, tomorrow night. We'll see you online in the meantime. FreeTalkLive.com, DerekJ.me. Talk- Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw, Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.38 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,226 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $380. 
Antiwar.com reports the People's Protection Unit, YPG, a Kurdish militia common in southeastern Turkey and northern Syria, has taken to kidnapping young Kurds, forcing them to join their fighting against the Islamic State. The move is being called conscription by the militia's political wing, as they have reportedly taken hundreds of youth off the streets of northern Syrian Kurdish cities in the operation. Locals say that many young people are staying inside their houses to avoid being captured and conscripted by the YPG. The move was harshly criticized by several rival Kurdish political factions. Ibrahim Biro, a spokesman for the Kurdistan Patriotic Party, said he believes the YPG effort to force locals into the group was a cynical move designed to give them more influence at an upcoming meeting of Syrian Kurdish factions in the defense of Rojava. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports a federal judge on Sunday struck down Alaska's first-in-the-nation ban on gay marriages, the latest court decision in a busy week on the issue. It was not immediately clear when marriage licenses would be issued to same-sex couples in Alaska. However, the state does have a three-day waiting period between the application and the marriage ceremonies. The late Sunday afternoon announcement caught many people off guard. No rallies were immediately planned. Five same-sex couples had asked the state of Alaska Alaska to overturn a constitutional amendment approved by voters in 1998 that defined marriage as being between one man and one woman. The lawsuit filed in May sought to bar enforcement of Alaska's constitutional ban on same-sex marriage. It also called for barring enforcement of any state law that refuses to recognize same-sex marriages legally performed in other states or countries or that prevent unmarried same-sex couples from marrying. U.S. District Judge Timothy Burgess heard arguments Friday afternoon and promised a quick decision. He released his 25-page decision Sunday afternoon. A spokeswoman for Governor Sean Parnell said the state intends to appeal the ruling. If the state does appeal to the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, chances of winning are very slim since the federal appeals court already had ruled against Idaho and Nevada, which made similar arguments. Voters in Alaska in 1998 approved a state constitutional amendment defining marriage as between one man and one woman, but in the past year, the U.S. Supreme Court has struck down a provision of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act preventing legally married same-sex couples from receiving a range of federal benefits. Federal courts have also struck down state constitutional bans in a number of states. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports, riot gear clad police arrested at least 17 people on Sunday after they refused orders to disperse from a spontaneous sit-in outside a convenience store in St. Louis during a weekend of peaceful protest against police violence. Thousands of people were staging protest marches, vigils, and other demonstrations in the St. Louis area this weekend, calling for the arrest of a police officer who shot an unarmed teenager in August. Another fatal shooting of a teenager by an off-duty cop last Wednesday has further inflamed tensions. Sunday's arrest were in the same neighborhood where Wednesday's shooting occurred. St. Louis police spokeswoman Shron Jackson said 17 people had been arrested for unlawful assembly early on Sunday at the parking lot of the Quick Trip convenience store. Mervyn Marcano, who 